Greetings, everyone. Once again, it's Mota Monidi sharing the authentic truth brought to us by Zula 100. So the teacher I will share is going to be regarding can faith without works save us? So can faith without deeds, without the actions, without the practice actually save us? Because in many so-called churches, many people who go on Sunday to pray and so on, they will go pray on Sunday, but then in other days, on Friday or the night before on, on, on Saturday, they will go do things that are against the law, meaning the moral law, even the law that their the Bible, the current classical day Bible has proclaimed. So we shall see if it's only faith that counts because many people will claim that once you've accepted their so-called Christ, all is forgiven and you can do basically anything and you will be safe. They will claim that it's only to say that the so-called Christ, he proclaimed that, that Christ as their own personal savior and that's it. And then they can do anything, they can commit sin, the law no longer matter, they're no longer under the law. That's what they say, that's what they claim, and that's how they're trying to justify their action. That's how they try to justify their sin. But we shall see if their action is biblical. We shall see if what they say, what they claim there is justified is according to the scriptures, to the text that they've accepted. So in this teaching we shall see in the current classical day Bible. For that, <clears throat> when we go in James 1 chapter, so James chapter 1 verse 16, it says, verse 16 and 17, don't be deceived, comma, my dear brothers and sisters, period. Verse 17, every good and perfect gift is from above, comma, coming down from the Father, of the heavenly light, comma, who does not change like shifting shadows, period. So here in the Bible, in the New Living, uh, New International Version, it says that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light. So it means that everything that is good, that is pure, comes from above. So we have to understand that spiritually it comes from um, the great order of things. It comes from the spiritual realm. It comes from the word. And it says here, who does not change like shifting shadows. So he says here, it doesn't change like shifting shadow. It doesn't modify. Because many people will claim that, okay, the law was given previously to the ancestors. It was given uh, through what, what they would claim Moses, but his true name is Busi. And they will claim later on that, okay, that law is no longer applicable at their time. So that means that the law has changed based on the generation. But we know that every, what he mentioned here in verse 17, that everything from above doesn't change like shifting shadow. So the law shouldn't change based on what the current period of time agrees upon or how their their view is because the word is above time is beyond time and space so when the word give the law to the people he sees all the time because he's beyond time and space so the law cannot change based on your point of view your understanding when we go in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 it says new in New Living Translation so here it says I am the Lord and I do not change period so here is according to the current class of the Bible so even according to your Bible so your so called Lord says that he does not change Period. That's why your descendant of Jacob are not already destroyed. So, some Christians out there 
will claim that, okay, the law was given, for example, the law of circumcision was given to Abraham. That's what they will claim. And then they will also claim that, oh, we are no longer under that law that Paul did, according to them, said that we it's no longer applicable. But the law was given under, well, according to them, to Abraham, and it was said that it was to his descendant. And it didn't say until Paul came and removed that. No, it was all the time throughout the descendant that was the mark to recognize, according to the, to the Bible, the people of God. So if that mark was given and it was in perpetuity, why then the so-called Christian would claim that Paul came and then remove that law when would, that law was given in perpetuity. That's how you know. When he says here, I am the Lord, I do not change. You have to understand that the verb, the word doesn't change. No matter the translations that men are going to come and try to write, try to change the text, the word doesn't change. The truth doesn't change. So some people will say we are no longer under the law. So does, does that mean you can go out and kill people? You can go out, steal, do commit outrageous act? Because that's what they will say. They will say, oh, we are no longer under the law. Christ, they will claim Christ has abolished the law. We are no longer under the prophet of what they claim the Old Testament, that it no longer applies to them. But we know that the law, you shall not kill, was given in the what they would claim the Old Testament. So it was given under that alliance. So if you're no longer under the law, does that mean you can also kill? You can also murder? You see? In James chapter 1, verse 22, he says, Do not merely listen to the word, comma, and so deceive yourself. Period. New Living Translation. But don't just listen to God's word, period. You must do what he says, period. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. So, you can see here that... Even the current classical day Bible confirmed that we shall not only listen to the word, we shall not only listen to the teachings, but we should also put it in practice. We should also respect, obey the law, the commandment. So all of you out there who will claim we are no longer under the law, you are in complete confusion. You are mistaken. You do not understand the scriptures. You do not understand spirituality. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15, it says, um, this is regarding, in 1 Corinthians 11, 15, it's regarding the covering, for example. Because many people will be, will be victims of the mistranslations, the false translations, the lying pen of the scribes. They will be victims of bad authors, the authors who hasn't who have not been mandated to write those Bibles. That's why in the current classical day Bibles there are so many mistakes, contradiction. And if you're not aware when you're gonna read, you're gonna if you accept everything you read and you don't have the spirit of discernment, you will be victim of these type of translation because in some translations, for example, in 1 Corinthians 11, 15, in the King James Bible, it says, but if a woman have long hair, comma, it is a glory to her color, for her hair is given her for a covering, period. So here in the King James Bible, it says, if, but if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given for her a covering. 
contemporary English version. So here there's a period. It's not a question. It says that her hair is giving her for a cover. Contemporary English version. But long hair is a beautiful way for a woman to cover her head. Period. Good news translation. But a woman, it is a beau, it is a thing of beauty. Period. Her hair has been given her to serve as a covering. Period. So you see here in these three translations, it says that the hair of the woman was given as a cover. So that's why many people will claim that, okay, because of that, women no longer need to cover their head or when they pray, for example. Because those version says there's a period. But when we go in the New American Bible, it says, whereas if a woman has long hair, it is her glory, comma, because long hair has been given her for covering, question mark. You see, it's no longer a period. Now it's a question mark. It is a question. It is an interrogation. So it's not a statement. So if you don't have the, the spirit, if you don't have the spirit of discernment, you will fall for those translations which would put a period and you won't understand that it is a mistranslation, that they didn't write the correct punctuation. Way Mount New Testament, it says, but that if a woman has long hair, it is her glory because her hair was giving her for a covering question mark. So here in Way Mount New Testament, in the New American Bible, it is questions that Paul is asking. But in the other versions, in some other version, Good News Translation, Contemporary English Version, King James Bible, it is a period, it is a statement. So a period and a question mark is two different things. It's two different understanding, it's two different interpretation. That's why you see in the so-called churches, they have so many different interpretation different understanding, different teachings. They disagree with each other. They don't understand each other. They say, no, this pastor is wrong. Oh, no, this other pastor is wrong. And they both, all of them will claim to have, some of them will claim to have the Holy Spirit. But there's division. So, there is confusion errors in the current classical day Bible. That's why when some people come out and claim, no, we are no longer under the law, the law was abolished, don't listen to those type of people. Don't listen to do it. These, these people, those, uh, don't listen to that person. We should obey the commandment, the law, the true law, the moral law, the spiritual law. Don't listen to those who, who say, oh, you can't go out and sin. It doesn't matter. Uh, the Christ has already died for you. You, you can do whatever. It's, it's over. Anyway, you will be safe. Don't listen to those type of people. Those are the people who are influenced by demons. They themselves, they're, they're influenced by demons. They're possessed when they speak like that. They're possessed <clears throat> mentally, intellectually. <clears throat> so, in James chapter 2, verse 19, it says, You say you have faith, comma, for you believe that there is one God, period. So, that is faith. That is accepting. So, you believe there's a God, that's faith. Because you cannot see God and you believe in Him. He says here, good for you. Even the demons believe this. Comma. So here you're told that even the demons, and we know the demons, those are the evil spirits. Those are the banished, the... the 
demons basically so he means the evil spirits and they themselves have faith meaning they believe in god because they cannot see god but they heard that there is a god and he says good for you even the demon believed this so even the demons have faith know that god exists and they tremble in terror so if you say that no it's only faith that count it's only believing that count but even the demons believe is it because they believe that they will be safe no. the demons cannot be safe they're they're condemned already so for those of you who claim no it's only faith that counts only faith will may, will save you. No, the scriptures, the text, even in the current classical Bible, contradict you. So when you are saying those things, when you are sharing that those views, your opinion, be very careful. Make sure you are mandated. Make sure you are not in sensations. King James Bible, thou believest, believest that there is one God, that doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. <clears throat> and when we go in James chapter 2, verse 20, in New Living Translation, it says, How foolish can you see? Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Question mark. English Standard Version. Do you want to be shown, you, feel, you foolish person, that faith apart from work, works is useless? So the faith without the works, without the deeds, without the practice, without the actions, without the respect, of the law without the put in practice is useless it doesn't serve that's what the scripture says that's where the text the test so anyone that will claim otherwise you're already against the same bible you you claim that is the word of god <clears throat> So Hebrew chapter 10, verse 36, it says, 36 to 39, you need to persevere, comma, so that after you have done the will of God, comma, so here, once again, in the current classical day Bible, you will receive what he has promised, period. Verse 37, for in just a little while, comma, he who is coming will come and will not delay, period. Verse 38, but my righteous one will live by faith, semicolon, and if he shrinks back, comma. You see, because some people will just stop when he says, oh, my righteous would live by faith, but it's not a period. Here's a semicolon. But my righteous will live by faith. So you need the faith. You need to know the message, believe in the message, Believe in the truth. Good. That's the faith. Put the faith in the word, in the verb of loba, in the teachings we are receiving. That's the faith. And you believe that there is a creator. Because when you look at the universe, when you look at the stars, when you look even at the clouds, you see the magnificence of the creation. And you understand that this cannot have come by, by chance, because chance doesn't exist. It, it, it's not random. 
There is intelligence behind. There is order. And beyond that, there's intelligence. So you know that there is a reason for why those things exist. And there is a creator. So that's fate. Even if you don't see him, because you are in the creation, indivisible, you're able to see the works and see the nature and the, that nature can also teach you. So you believe there is a creator, you believe that there's a reason behind all things. So you have the faith because you cannot see the creator. So you live by that, that faith, you live, and in that faith is also the teachings. So in the prophet who came and taught us, um, who taught the, who taught us the, the messages, the word, the, the commandment, the law, to obey so that we may be saved, so that we may attain eternal life. So that's the faith. That's why he says in verse 38, but my righteous one will live by faith. So you need that faith, because if you don't have that faith, if you don't believe, you... Why, why are you even here? <laughs> but my righteous one will live by faith, semicolon. And if he shrinks back, comma. So if he shrinks back, what does that mean? It means if he, he returns to his old ways, if he shrinks back, I mean, if he go back to basically the, the ways of the nations, meaning the pagans, let's say like that. If he shrinks back, meaning if he abandoned the faith, if he shrinks back, if he abandoned the deeds as well, the put in practice, I, take, I will take no pleasure in him. Verse 39, but we are we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, Same, comma, but of those who have faith and persevere their soul. So the perseverance that's in the faith and in the works. That's the perseverance. That's what, <clears throat> and we see in James chapter 2, verse 14. To 24, it says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone claimed to have faith, comma, but has no deeds? Question mark. Can such faith save them? Question mark. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you tell him, go in peace, stay warm and well fed, but does not provide for his physical need, what goes what good is that? Verse 17. So too, faith by itself, if it does not result in action, is dead. Period. So the faith, if it doesn't result in action, because in the faith there's the teachings, there's what you have to do. Now, if you don't do it, Why do you have the faith in the first place? Which, which type of faith is that? So it's both. You need the faith and you need the works. You need the deed. And the scriptures confirm that. Even the current classical day Bible confirm that. Anyone else out there who will disagree, you're completely wrong. Verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Period. So in the deeds, somebody that respects the moral law, somebody that put in practice that, um, let's say, love thy neighbor and so on, that... The commandment that don't kill, don't steal, don't covet, don't don't try to uh, don't try to rob people. 
don't try to scam people, don't doesn't lie. That person is respecting the moral law, is respecting his conscience as well. And through his works, he's showing his faith. So, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 15, he says, Outside are the dogs, comma, those who practice m magic arts, comma, the sexual immorals, comma, the murderers, comma, the idolater idolaters, and everyone who loves and practice falsehood. So, you're told here in Revelation 22, 15, that outside are the dogs, those who practice ma magic arts, the sexual immorals, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who love and practice falsehood. All those, who, all those people who practice these, they're going against the law. They are disobeying, so they don't have the works, because they will practice magical art, so that means their actions are bad. They doing evil. He says here the murderers. So when we talk about murderers, the law thou shalt not kill was given. So when you say we are no longer under the law, but okay, so that means you can go out and kill people. Well, if you kill people, you are a murderer. And the murderer will not be saved. That's why in Revelation 22, 15, that's they, those, those type of people will be outside. You see? So, I mean, which type of reasoning those, those people are taking? And they, they will claim they have the, the spirit. They'll claim they speak in tongues. They'll claim they're, they, that their so-called Christ has saved them. But they will still practice immoral things and they will teach other people as well to also disobey the law to no let's do this it doesn't matter it's only faith that counts every sunday they're gonna go and pray and so on and then during the week they're gonna do abominations and then on sunday they're gonna go to church yes forgive and it's so for them it's like a joke you see we shall not laugh regarding spirituality. This is serious. This is regarding salvation. This is regarding righteousness. The just, the just, the way of the just is righteousness. In righteousness, it's obeying the commandment, the law. So, for your information, those who claim no, <clears throat> you can, um, it's only faith that counts, the law, it's over, and so on. Well, for your information, Satan was banished because he disobeyed the law. Because the law that shall not convict, covet, that's also a spiritual law, and Satan disobeyed that law. And because of that, he was banished. Now you, you will come out and say, oh no, the law no longer mattered, no longer applied. You see that your way of viewing things, the things you're saying with the person who says that, you, those are the teachings of Satan that you're preaching. Those are the teachings of demons. That's the anti-truth. That's the lie. So, that was regarding can faith without works save us?
So we need the faith and we need the works. We need the deeds. Now, it's not faith in the false, the falseness. Because now the question is, which faith? Is it the religions? No. There's only one source, one truth, one path. And it's the path we are sharing here. Is Bibel, Kalatam Bali, the book of the truth. So the teachings we are sharing, because in the current class of the Bibles, there is a lot of mistakes, a lot of contradiction. They changed, they tried to falsify history, they tried to add their own ideas in the books, in the text, in the copies, in the scriptures. But the truth is here. And the message is here. That's the message we are sharing. The unique creator is Luba. And the commandment and the history, the true history, is here. So if you have faith in the false god, if you have the faith in all those, in all those religions, your faith is in vain because those religions is not the truth. They will not save you. There is the lie. It's the anti-truth. They teach falseness. Falseness. There is no salvation in all those religions. Because their saviors never came. It's a lie. It's a falsification. The savior is Jokisabe, the true Christ. And he was black. If you, if you have a faith in another, if you have the faith in another false god, if you have the faith in other religions, in other sort of beliefs, that faith is in vain. So, for those who say no, the color of the Christ doesn't matter. Well, if you're believing in a false Christ, that faith is in vain. If you believe he's, he was white, that faith is in vain. That's the lie. If you believe he came in the Middle East, that he was mixed, that he had long hair, blue eyes, that wasn't his, that wasn't his appearance on earth. So you believe in the lie. That's why we are presenting the truth. And if you put the faith in the truth, in the teachings we are sharing in Zula 100, the only teacher, in Loba, the unique creator, who, <coughs> the unique creator, then, and you put the commandment in practice. You have the good deeds, and the commandments are written in Bibel. And you persevere until you leave this physical plane, then you will be safe. So that's the teaching. All glory to Loba, the unique creator.